I'm going to quickly do some trig functions and the reciprocal functions. Um, in the last video, we took a note and we said there's sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. The cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent of the hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. Well, there's actually three other trig functions. And I kind of feel like they're worth mentioning. And they're actually reciprocals of sine, cosine, and tangent. And they are the cosecant, which I'm going to abbreviate as CSC, the cosecant of theta, which really equals 1 over the sine of theta. But if you do that, that's like saying, I'm going to do some algebra down here, 1 over the opposite over the hypotenuse. And if you multiply this by the hypotenuse over the opposite, over hypotenuse over the opposite. Hypotenuse over opposite over hypotenuse over opposite is equal to 1, so you can do that. Those will cancel out, and those will cancel out. And you're left with 1 times hypotenuse over opposite, which is hypotenuse over opposite, which is basically the um, reciprocal of that. So I'm going to say the cosecant of theta is equal to hypotenuse over the opposite side. And like I said, we'll call this x, y, and r. So the next one is secant of theta, and we abbreviate that sec. And that's the reciprocal of cosine, which just gives us the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And I'm going to tidy this up a little bit. Try to give myself a little bit of room. Clean this up. And the last one is going to be the cotangent of theta, which is going to equal 1 over the tangent of theta. And so therefore, cotangent of theta equal to the adjacent over opposite. And that's really it. Um, basically, there is something that's kind of neat about this. You could say, all right, if I knew this, and I had that this side was, you know, that's not a very good picture. Let me erase this picture and start over. It had this. And I knew that this was this side was 5, and my hypotenuse was 13. What you can do is you can do the Pythagorean theorem, and you'd say, well, I guess I'll call that y. Say y squared plus 5 squared equals 13 squared. After you do the Pythagorean theorem out, you'll find out that y equals 12. So if I said, let me tidy this up as well. You'll have to excuse me and just write this out real quick. Because we can't have data. So if I punt this over opposite, secant. And actually, I'm going to interrupt my own thought. Um, one of the reasons I like doing it in this order is because it kind of helps me remember I have. A C here, a C here, and a C here. As long as you remember that the tangent and the cotangent go together, remembering that cosecant goes with sine and secant goes with cosine, uh, works out well. Anyway, so if I said the sine of theta is equal to, that's not what I wanted to study, the cosine of theta. is equal to 5 over 13. Find, co find the cotangent 
of theta. What I could do is I could say, well, cosine of theta equals 5 over 13, I did my triangle. I know that the opposite side, y, would have to equal 12, so y equals 12. And then I could say, well, what's the tangent of theta? The tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which is 12 over 5. Therefore, my cotangent must be 5 over 12. So like I said, it's kind of neat because knowing, knowing their relationships helps you figure out these problems pretty easily. And knowing Pythagorean theorem is always, always, always a good thing. And that's, that's right, that's it.